Hello, my name is Sharoni Savitskete and uh, today I will be talking to you about cognitive load in VR. It is great to be um, invited to speak as part of the iLearn 2021 conference. Today I'm speaking on behalf of my colleagues um, who are listed in this slide here, which is myself, Elliot Millington, who's a PhD student, uh, Chris Freeman, who works for Edify, and Neil McDonald, who is a supervisor of myself and Elliot at the University of Glasgow. As part of our PhDs, um, we are working with University of Glasgow and Edify um, as an industrial partnership and looking at the immersive teaching experiences. As part of that, a cognitive load and an issue um, that teachers in particular face in virtual reality has emerged. And this is what our presentation will be on today. So just to quickly summarize today's agenda, what we will do is just have a couple of slides of the a quick chat over the literature that's currently out there. As I'm sure you can imagine, there's a lot of literature there, so we just picked some uh, relevant and key research uh, material. Then we'll briefly introduce Ed Edify and what Edify is, and I will show you the um, different perspectives um, from the teachers and students' perspective whilst using Edify. Then we will discuss some outstanding challenges, in particular um, the uh, directions we are wanting to take in our future's research, which will lead to discussing the next steps. So this is just a slide to quickly go over the literature overview and summary. As I'm sure um, a lot of you might be aware that the roots of cognitive load lies in uh, li psychology literature, particularly around working memory and executive functions. Here we kind of learned, uh, went a slightly different direction and tried to find literature around teaching and particularly teaching using immersive technology or just technology in general. So uh, using a virtual program uh, is a learning process with performance increasing as the user becomes more familiar with the tool. This does not apply only to immersive technology. We can say the same for using an internet or starting with PowerPoint when they was first emerged as a teaching tool. And it took us a while to get familiar with the tool, get uh, familiar using the tool and designing our um, teaching material. Schrader and Bastians in 12, 2012 found that psychological and self-reported cognitive load increased as learning environments became more immersive. And, and I'm sure that's understandable from uh, all the teachers who have previously used virtual reality as a teaching tool. Just using this new uh, exciting tool does um, add an additional pressure, not so much uh, in designing of the material, which is the, perhaps the more exciting part of teaching in immersive technology, but uh, more of just making sure that what you are delivering and what you are teaching in virtual reality resonates with the students. Steed et al. in 2016 showed that the presence of virtual avatar affects cognitive load, implying that the design of virtual interface is important. We are considering uh, how uh, impactful uh, teachers in particular avatar is, and we are trying to find out how that resonates in the use of Edify. That research is still ongoing, so we, hopefully we will be able to talk um, a little bit about the avatar use perhaps in the next few conference over the next coming years. And finally, Dimmel and et al. in 2020 find that more complex virtual environments reduce the perception of pain. So that's kind of delving more into the, um, the medical and life sciences field. There's quite an uh, extensive research on uh, the use of virtual reality and how uh, it relinks to cognitive load. So this is just a broad um, overview with some snippets of the research that's currently going on in the cognitive uh, load aspect. So we have mentioned Edify a few times now. So what is Edify? Edify uses virtual reality and video conferencing to enable engaging educational experiences. The platform helps learners learn by doing, to observe, collaborate and practice in their own time and do it over and over again. It is built for academics by academics. Edify lets educators 
share the power of immersive virtual teaching and training, and it can be done remotely um, and students who have just ordinary equipment. And Edify goes beyond the classroom or textbook and explores the virtual worlds, conduct challenging or costly experiments, and bend the rules of reality from anywhere on any device. So the scope for Edify is huge, but what we're interested in in this particular strand of research is to see how teachers experience Edify and what would be the best way to enable teachers to do this um, as effectively as possible. So this is a quick video of myself and as a teacher, um, I think I'll just pause it really quickly before I move on. And it's not wanting to do that, there we are. And so I'm in the teaching environment in Edify. This is one of the lessons I have created um, for Edify, which is just a demo of the how we can use um, different assets imported in Edify environment to teach basic neuroanatomy. As you can see, the, the view overall, I'll talk you through different tools, uh, is what the teacher sees. What uh, we also have here at the bottom left corner is what the student sees when the stu teacher is broadcasting. And um, so the, the student, which in here is, uh, you can see it, Elliot, one of the colleagues, uh, will put this presentation together and we're working on this um, in Edify. The, the teacher, with this, we've done this broadcasting via Zoom, so the teacher is able is able to see only what's happening in this big main screen and we've just superimposed what the student's able to see and how the teaching takes place. This nicely illustrates the cognitive load that the teacher experience uh, using these new, new tools. Um, just to stop playing, you can see that there's different broadcasting tools that I'm pointing at. Also, you can see that as I'm moving my head with the VR headset, it is quite jittery. So if I am actually, as a student, it's perhaps less jittery than it is from my end, but it's still quiet, um, it's not very steady. However, what we can do is place these cameras, as you can see the teacher is doing, and that makes it, uh, you can broadcast a very steady view. You can see now if I pick the camera, I think I just uh, accidentally deleted it, but it just shows you how much the teacher has to do to set up a simple scene for teaching, which screens they want the students to see. Um, and you need to plan the lesson, and then as you delivering it, you need to make sure that you switch between all these different assets. So you can see I placed the camera here uh, to be able that, to view YouTube video. This is just an example of what teacher needs to do to set up before even broadcasting. So although Elliot's there helping me put this video together, you can see that I'm still not really officially would be ready as teacher to broadcast the lesson. So now you can see there's, um, if I'm going for the laser pointer, I'm switching back into different broadcasting environments. And what I want to do is select different camera to show the student. I believe I'm trying to demonstrate the, the laser pointer here. So, yes, yeah, so if I click broadcast here, at the bottom left, you'll be able to see that the student sees only the slides and the view is already a lot steadier. But as a teacher, I need to be very careful as to uh, if I click on any of the models or any preset um, assets in the environment, those can be quite difficult to put back together also can do all of these different adjustments, but they need to be done in the background. So the student sees the ultimate end product, and I can talk through, um, in this case, the slides, the different three-dimensional views or the scans. But as a teacher, you on top of uh, the controlling of these controls, which are very, very new, you need to make sure that you are talking the students through the material as well. And that can be quite daunting. A few times we have this uh, compared to a performance in the theater where you need to know where your camera is set, what assets you've got, um, and then you can see I need to continuously change between laser pointer, continuously go back to um, different assets available. So there is, um, as I'm, the video keeps going, I'll talk you through it again. So you can see again, which I'm going back to the model. So now I'm gonna start manipulating the model to show to a student. 
So there's a few things here to, to acknowledge. So Edify and similar teaching tools in virtual and immersive uh, reality, it's hu there's a huge benefit, especially for teaching something like neuroanatomy. You've got three-dimensional models you can uh, manipulate, you can import three-dimensional uh, visualization data. You, you can do a lot, but also there is a flip side to that, that there's there's a lot going on behind the scenes that the students do not see. As you can see again with an example in the bottom left, the student sees only the rotating brain and what this the teacher is telling them. But the teacher continuously needs to go back to to various uh, tools that are available. So yes, it's great technology and it's great opportunity to to teach with a tool such as this. But there is, like I said, a flip side that it can be quite challenging to get familiar with this new technology and make sure that you are teaching it as efficiently as possible. So aside, so you've seen just a snippet of what um, Edify is able to do and what we are, what do we mean by cognitive load um, in the use of immersive technology, particularly for teaching. So here is just a, a quick summary slide around the benefits and the challenges. Um, there seems to be a lack of research on teachers' perspective around the cognitive load in teaching in particular. Um, it has been established that immersive learning works, uh, and we know that students responded positively, and we've gathered quite a lot of feedback from the students. But now with these immersive tools, such as Edify Emerging for a Teacher, what can we do next to understand that process? Um, then, what's the difference, if there is any, between treating immersive lessons as a performance performance versus a standard teaching methods? So I already mentioned that um, navigating the environment takes quite a bit of practice and familiarity with the tool, but you also need to teach on top of that. So you, as I'm sure a lot of um, practitioners will know that uh, as you are teaching, you cannot just uh, stay quiet for while you're trying to figure out how you switch between different broadcasting uh, screens. So it needs to be a continuous engaging lesson. And it's one of our questions to look into how the standard uh, established teaching methods are relevant for immersive teaching. And do we need to move away from that and start incorporating um, details from different uh, fields? And then finally, the ultimate uh, question, is it a true cognitive load issue or is it just a practice effect? Um, so like we mentioned previously, cognitive load is heavily based in cognitive psychology theory. So if we are investigating it from that perspective, uh, it, we would need to delve more into psychological um, aspects of the research. Where if it's just a practice effect, some literature around the use of digital tools um, is available around the practice effect, but nothing on the immersive education. So perhaps we need to go down that route um, and explore how practice effects, especially for immersive education, um, work in, in such um, tools such as Edify. Or perhaps we've just identified a, a gap in literature and we need to combine the two. So this is just a, a, a quote I wanted to share from Bill Gates that technology is just a tool uh, in terms of getting the kids working together and motivating them, the teacher is the most important, and which is what, the reason why we are trying to investigate the cognitive load um, from the teacher's perspective. So just the next steps, uh, we want to evaluate areas of research we can link with our work. So uh, like some of the ones I mentioned were the cognitive load and then the practice effect. And we need to identify if we should focus beyond the school of psychology and pedagogy. Perhaps we should go into the philosophy side of things or even uh, any other different areas. We also aim to assess which elements in the immersive lesson, for example, using Edify, are using the majority of the cognitive resources, whether that's switching between broadcasting cameras or is it manipulating the models or is it just talking through the lesson itself. And once we identify that, we can propose design solutions and evaluate if these solutions are effective to help teacher to teach um, as effectively and as engagingly as possible. 
So thank you very much for uh, taking time to listen. And if you've got any questions, you can always get in touch with us. Uh, my details will be available.